My name is Philip Pepper and I want to introduce you to my wife Vicki. Hi, Philip and I would like to welcome you into our home and especially into Philip's workroom where he creates the many garments you've seen in his seminars and in national magazines. Today Philip will be sharing with you many of the techniques he uses in creating the garments. I thought this would also be a great time for Vicki to show you some of her favorite sewing techniques. During this video she and I will be using many different stitch programs. At the end of the video, there'll be a page with pictures so you can compare your machine to the one I've been using. There are many different threads available to use in the bobbin case. I have Pearl Crown Rayon from the YLI Thread Company here. And also from YLI, I have Silk Ribbon, which is one of the prettiest things you can put in the bobbin case for the heavier look. When you're using these threads in your bobbin case, you need to loosen the tension on the bobbin case. On most bobbin cases, you'll find a large set screw that can be turned counterclockwise to loosen and clockwise to tighten. If you enjoy doing this after I show you the technique, you may want to invest in an additional bobbin case. When winding special heavy threads to be used in the bobbin case, I still wind them as if they were normal thread. Pass them through all the guides the instruction book tells you to. One of my favorite threads to use in the bobbin case is elastic thread. I've selected just a plain straight stitch program with a length at roughly 10 to 12 stitches per inch. The needle thread tension remains on normal. I like to use the edge of the presser foot as a guide to the previous row to keep the distance uniform. This is roughly the amount of shearing effect that you'll want to achieve. In a moment, we'll take this to the iron and steam it, and the heat and steam together will cause the elastic thread to shrink. With the elastic right side up to you and a steam iron, hold the steam iron over it and steam. You can actually see the elastic draw back up to the size it was before it was wound onto the bobbin. With silk ribbon in the bobbin case, you need to select a decorative stitch program which is an outline style. Because the decorative thread is in the bobbin case, you'll want to sew with the right side of the fabric down to the bed of the machine. This is the beautiful effect that you can get with silk ribbon in the bobbin case. Here I have one of my favorite samples of all time and this is the next technique I'm going to show you. This is a free motion quilted jacket with a plain straight stitch. Again, I use a YLI product. I like their monofilament or clear nylon thread. I use it only in the needle, not in the bobbin case. I prefer to keep a cotton thread in the bobbin. To prepare your fabric for the quilting, place two layers of thermor batting or one layer between 
two pieces of fabric. I have monofilament thread in the needle and number 60 cotton in the bobbin. The needle thread tension has been reduced by one number because with monofilament thread it pulls tighter than normal thread. I have the darning foot on the machine and with my fof I need to lower the presser bar lifter into the darning position. Move the fabric so that you create the design you want or you can draw it onto the fabric before sewing. After I've sewn the design onto the fabric, I will then go all around it with what I call little E's or just circles. It's a very easy technique to learn and you see how quickly that went. This next technique I know you're going to really enjoy doing. As you can see on the pillowcase, the scallop is remaining off the edge of the fabric as well as on the nightgown. I'm also going to be showing you how to cord a scallop to make it look better if it's used as a trim and not remaining off the edge. For this you're going to need number 5 pearl cotton, a normal 80 needle, and some adding machine tape. So we'll go to the machine now and I'll show you how we do this. When I sew a scallop to be used as a trimmed border or just an accent, I always cord it from the top with number 5 pearl cotton. To show you the dramatic difference, I'm going to sew a plain row on the left and a corded row on the right. To cord a scallop, simply take the number 5 pearl cotton and pass it through the right needle bar thread guide as I have it there. Pass it under the left of the foot and just sew. As you can see, the corded scallop on the right has a much more raised effect. For the off the edge scallop, place the pearl cotton number five up through the hole in your needle plate as I have done here. Use plain adding machine tape as your backing. Place a folded piece of fabric under the presser foot so that most of the scallop stitch program sews only on the paper and barely bites into the fold.
because the pearl cotton is passed up through the hole in the needle plate, the needle thread and bobbin thread couch it in the middle. Carefully tear the paper away from the scallop on the outermost edge and then from the back. There you have your beautiful trim. For another idea with your off the edge scallop, sew separate pieces and after removing the paper, place the scallops together in the center and bar tack them with a narrow zigzag stitch. Continue this all the way down until you have an insertion piece. Couching is one of my favorite things to do on the machine and it's just an old sewing term which means to lay down threads. Foff makes two presser feet available to you to make this job easier. And if you have another brand machine, most manufacturers also make these special presser feet. We have one with nine holes which holds the smaller cord and then we have one with a single ring in the middle which will help you couch down the larger, wider threads like this Madeira thread I have here. This garment next to me is on the current issue of the Foff Club magazines with instructions. This particular cording foot was designed to couch one, two, or three strands of heavier cord. It has two slots in the front and three grooves that run along the bottom. To make the presser foot easier to load, I like to use the needle down feature. With the needle in the fabric, raise the presser bar lifter and bring the cord from behind the presser foot. The needle's now holding the two strands. Pull it up through the center of the foot, lower the presser bar lifter and begin stitching. The cords will be caught under the thread. I find it easier to manipulate fabric with this foot when I hold the cords up to me as I'm doing now. Now you have your couch threads. I use program 70 here, but you may want to experiment with the stitch programs on your own machine. This pressure foot is the one I was telling you about with nine holes. I find it much easier to thread those little holes while the foot's off the machine. This foot, in conjunction with some stitch programs, gives the effect of attached braid. feeling you'll want to add this presser foot to your extra accessory feet. This is the presser foot I described to you earlier with the large ring in the front for couching heavier, wider threads. To load this foot, pass the thread through the front of the ring, then to the left, 
Raise the presser bar lifter and pull the thread under the foot and to the back. You're still going to want to hold the thread up to you as you're sewing as I'm doing here. This pressure foot makes couching so much easier because it holds the thread to be couched in the proper place at all times. I know you're going to have fun experimenting with programs and different threads. The specialty presser feet are always a plus for decorative stitching. However, you can still couch with a plain satin stitch foot. Sink the needle in the fabric to hold it in place. Raise the presser foot and bring the couched thread under the foot. Take a few stitches to secure it. Lift the presser foot and bring the thread up through the slot and over the top of the foot. It's easier when this couch thread is above the plastic piece of your presser foot. As you can see, couching really adds a nice effect to your fabric. I get the honor of showing you the wing needle. This is one of our favorite needles that we use in our decorative stitching. This needle comes in two separate sizes. The size 100 will give you the smaller holes. The size 120 will give you the larger holes. The wing needle will simulate the commercial hem stitching. Also, you must remember to get professional results. You must use a fiber that is at least 50% natural, as well as to stabilize your fabric. In Philip's book, he goes into detail the use of the wing needle. Let me go to the machine and show you some fun things. I have my machine set up with a lightweight cotton thread in the bobbin and Alcazar rayon through the wing needle. I will first show you how to attach lace to fabric with this hem stitch effect. You must program your machine to any multi-motion stitch, but the one I have selected is program 112 with a width of 2.5, reducing my top needle tension to 3. To keep your stitching even with your lace, line up the red center line on your foot with the header of the lace, and then begin to stitch. I'll turn it around to show you a little on the other opposite side. I will trim some of it, the fabric from behind. If you want to have the sheer effect, being careful not to cut your lace. I have cut the fabric from the back of only half and left the fabric showing on the other half. I have the overall design of the lace showing, and then I have the shadow effect of the fabric coming from behind. 
Next, let me share with you one of my favorite stitches, the star program. The width has been reduced to 6 millimeters with a size of 9 millimeters, but you may change this to suit your individual need. Once again, line the center long red line of your foot against the header of the lace and begin to stitch. One of the most beautiful stitches on our computerized machines are all the entredeau programs. And this is one of my favorites since it so resembles the actual entredeau. On my machine, it is program number 115. And I'm going to reduce the width to 4 and a length of 3. If you so desire, you may weave silk ribbon in and out of the stitching, which I will demonstrate to you later. Now let me show you hem stitching at the same time as couching silk ribbon. I have a program called a ladder stitch, and on my machine it is program number 111. The length is 3.0 and the width is set at 3.5. It is much easier to guide if you position the lace under the foot and the silk ribbon on top of the foot. Isn't that easy as well as giving you a beautiful effect? Another one of our favorite stitches which you may not think of using with the wing needle is the feather stitch. On my machine it is program number 157. Now, let me show you a trick in weaving silk ribbon. First, take the end of the ribbon and secure it through the needle. Now, I'm going to go from hem stitch hole to hem stitch hole. Come up in the, one of the holes, take your ribbon and just slightly lay it on top, anchor it through the ribbon and pull down. Come up at the other hole, position it, then go down through the ribbon into the hole. This will prevent the ribbon from twisting and give you full coverage. One of the first things I learned to do in this industry was free motion and many people are intimidated by that because the feed dogs are below the needle plate and you have to move the fabric. However, it's real easy to learn. After I began using just a single needle, I decided to try a double needle. 
These collars are an example of a 4.0 twin needle with a zigzag setting of 2.0 or 2.5. When I do machine embroidery work, I like to use a lightweight rayon thread. This is Alcazar's thread that's available from your Foff dealer. The weight's about 50. I still prefer to use number 60 weight cotton in the bobbin case. For the dimensional work, I have two layers of Swiss organdy placed into an embroidery hook. I'm using a 4.0 twin needle with the darning foot attached. Remember to lower the feed dogs below the needle plate and the presser bar lifter placed into the darning position, which is midway between up and down. You may draw your design onto the fabric if you want to, but I am not. I am just going to stitch around to form a flower. Move the hoop as I did there to create the design you want. In this case, I'm making a small flower. After you've sewn the design, you'll trim it on the outermost edges as I have this one and then it can be attached with a plain straight stitch. Many times to achieve a more dramatic effect, I'll use multiple spools of threads through the eye of one needle. When I do that, I go to the Metafill needle, which was designed for use with metallic threads. It has a much longer eye and a special Teflon coating in the eye to allow the thread to pass through smoothly. This garment is an example of where I use this technique. I also have a special threading way I want to show you. My machine has an additional spool holder for a second spool of thread. But with lightweight machine rayon embroidery threads, I prefer to place additional spools to the side of the machine and close the lid. I also find that the results are better when I thread both threads through the left divider as opposed to separating them. Remember to close your lid. try this at home, you're going to see the same heavy, dramatic effect that I've achieved here. I'd love to show you one of my favorite techniques known as faggoting or bridging. In this technique, you're going to take fabric and separate it and rejoin it by using the sewing machine. This is a technique that is commonly done by hand, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to do on the sewing machine. We can make it as delicate or as heavy as we'd like by combining our threads. Let me show you our favorite way of doing the faggoting or bridging on the machine. 
First, we need to secure the edges to be joined for stability. To do this, use a foot on your machine which has a channel in the center to guide the pearl cotton through which will be couched down. The one I am using is the applique foot. With your machine set up on a zigzag program, decrease the density of stitching or length to not quite a satin stitch. I have mine set at .80 with a stitch width of 1.5. Stitch the next row parallel to the previous line using the edge of the foot as your guide. Now I'm going to trim as close as possible to the stitching, separating the fabric. Be careful not to cut into your stitching. Now to reassemble these two pieces, I will remove my applique foot and put on my regular presser foot. I have selected program 19 from my machine. You will actually be forming the stitch in air when anchoring it to reinforce the edge of the fabric. To keep equal distance, line up the left side of the stitching, the satin stitching that we just did, with the far left red line of the foot. The right stitching will be line up with the far right side of the foot. Now I'll be stitching in air to form the fagoting. This is the results you have. Depending upon the look you want, you may want it to look this delicate with one thread through the needle. Or to give additional thickness or almost a crocheted look, use two threads through the eye of the needle. For an even heavier appearance, use a technique that Philip showed you earlier using heavier threads in the bobbin case. This was using pearl cotton in the bobbin case. Silk ribbon embroidery by hand is one of the most popular classes around the country at the moment, but I prefer to do it with the sewing machine. I use monofilament thread and the needle, and I hook the fabric. In this segment, I'm going to show you how easily you can do that. In my job, I have been privileged to travel around the continental United States, Canada and Australia, and other places to teach. One of my favorite places to go is Canada. This is an example of silk ribbon embroidery by machine in a class I'm taking there soon. For silk ribbon embroidery on the machine, I like to use monofilament in the needle and number 60 weight cotton in the bobbin. I also use no presser foot at all and lower the feed dogs. You're going to want to first secure the silk ribbon to the fabric by moving across and back with a plain straight stitch. After securing the silk ribbon, trim away the excess ribbon. To make the Lazy Daisy flower, 
with the plain straight stitch, travel a distance that you want the length of the pedal to be. Sink the needle down into the fabric, bring the silk ribbon up around the front of the needle, and then to the back. Hold the silk ribbon down, not too tight, one stitch out, and jump over the silk ribbon and stitch into the fabric to secure the loop. Now, travel back to the beginning, pull the silk ribbon over the center, and stitch across as you did earlier. To make additional petals, we're gonna follow the same steps. Travel the distance with the straight stitch, sink the needle in the fabric, bring the silk ribbon again around the front and to the back, hold it loosely in place, one stitch out, one over, back to the beginning, and pull your loop up. Stitch across again. You now have the beginnings of a beautiful silk ribbon flower by machine. Well, Vicki, I think we've given our viewers plenty of information to work with, and I've really enjoyed this. Thanks again for joining us in our workroom. We look forward to sharing more techniques with you at another time. Thank you for coming.